Hey, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thanks for tuning Shut in. Up. Thanks for tuning in. Look, there's heaps to talk about. I, I've wanted to do a fact for ages. It's a long time coming, but uh, look, we'll, we'll just get into it. The first thing, like, if you haven't, if you don't know Ol, um, he's my old parrot. He's nearly 20 years old, and uh, he interrupts people. But uh, anyway, let's just get into it. I couldn't believe it. A couple of weeks ago, an old friend, another old friend, returned this to me. If you all remember the Lamb Chopper guitars, uh, he bought two of them off me, and one of them he plays all the time, and the other one he just, uh, I don't know, it just sat in his cupboard. He didn't play it enough, and uh, when I talked to him about it, he said, look, I want to give it back to you. And this one happened to be like one of the first ones that I ever got, that I had made, and uh, had needed a lot of work done on it. Um, and so, like I had to strip the back of the neck, I had to strip the whole neck, I redid the frets, um, and I actually put the serial number of 678 on it. So that's really cool, you know, I've got it back. It sounds really heavy, really solid, um, but hopefully I'll, jam some Metallica covers or something on that in the next little while. But um, yeah, welcome back. Welcome back to Lamb Guitar. Um, I did regret selling the last one. I didn't think it was going to be the last one. I thought I was just going to bring more in and sell more and make more, but it all just stopped at the time. I, life was busy, everything was busy, and this project had to go on hold. But, but anyhow, that's another story for another day um, next so a few months ago I did a video saying about the best picks for metal and I went through a whole heap of different picks and we discussed you know how it strikes the string and how it feels and how it wears anyway to progress from there I went and bought a whole lot more picks that you all suggested um, Got the, the flows and the little tiny jazz picks and old text jazz picks and a whole heap in here. I just went through. Long story short, the pick I've been using the last few months that I've really liked and I've, has made my playing better is the John Petrucci, um, whatever that's called, the John Petrucci one. Uh, I love them. They're really good. They... I did find them a little bit slippery at first to hold on to, but they glide across the strings so nicely and uh, so they're, they're slightly smaller than the, the standard sort of picks that I was using. I, I was right into the James Hetfield, um, the Black Fangs. I haven't tried any White Fangs yet, but I was right into the Black Fangs. And as good as they are, uh, they were wearing out really, really quick, so the black fangs just wore out. I was going through like a pick twice a week, maybe. Depends on the song I was playing, but anything like a disposable heroes riff or any a lot of those faster Metallica riffs I was playing, it just chews them out so quickly and they wear down to nothing. But the Petrucci ones, they're just they're like butter. They really glide and took a little bit to get used to the slightly smaller pick, but when I did, I find that my picking is a lot better. I can play, I can play things like the Lucretia intro. Shut up. Come on, man. I was, like the Lucretia in, uh, intro, I can play that, um, like really clean every time. I don't, I don't have to warm up for it. I can just pick up the guitar and I can just play that. You can't play it. Um, so yeah, I can play that clean every time, and I, I put it down to this pick. I just really like them. Um, really good size. Anyway, uh, yeah, before we move on, look, I, uh, I don't want to bore anyone with anything at all when I'm making videos. I'm, I'm a bit conscious of just making something boring that you're just going to turn off. Everyone's busy. But if there's something that you want to know, if there's something you think I know that you don't, or something I want to pass on. I'm here just to pass on anything I do now. I'm not retaining anything and I'm not trying to... Yeah, that's right. We just pass on what we know. Um, 
I'm not going to be here. Pass on what we know. So, so if there are any things that you want me to tell you or help with, uh, please just leave it in the comments and we'll get to the next facts because I'd like to do more for you all if if I can pass on oh, Yeah, if we can pass on anything that's worthwhile, I'd love to, to share it with you all. So, um, right, another thing. Uh, how we go about working out songs by ear. It's one of those things, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And it all comes down to listening and how you hear the song. Uh, your ears, you, you hear what you want to hear sometimes when you're listening. Uh, over the years, I've just my, basically tuned my ear into just, just to hear the guitar parts. I, I focus, every time I hear a song, I'm just focusing on guitar parts. And you try and isolate left and right and hear what the melody's doing, hear what the harmony's doing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, tr I try and listen really hard to what the song is actually doing. And uh, in all honesty, you got to think of a song just like a, a really detailed picture or movie or something that you watch. And when you're watching it, you, you pick up something new each time. You, 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 you're staring at a painting of, you know, a, a, a streetscape of, of the clown juggling and a dog stealing apples out of the cart and you know there's a lady falling out the window those sorts of paintings that you just look at and they're really busy there's heaps going on every time you look at it you, you, you find something new and once you see it you can't not see it and so music is very much the same the way I work songs out by ear you, you have to just look for those little nuances and those things that, that until someone points it out to you or you hear it yourself you, you just overlook it. You don't even notice the whatever. You know, you don't you don't notice that the sign is backwards or I don't know. But that that really helps working out the songs by ear. Uh, another thing that that I another tool that I use for for working them out is Riff Station. It's just a an app on the desktop you can buy. It's about fifty dollars and. Uh, you can, in, in Riff Station, you can slow the song down and isolate certain frequencies in the bandwidth and it's really good to work things out. When you can target and you can pinpoint certain guitar lines and things, you can learn things really accurately, so it, it helps a lot. You know, I don't trust tabs, I don't like them. Not that I don't like them, I just, I, don't, I just don't trust them. Okay, last, so let's work on how to increase the speed of your down picking. It's, it's a massive question that I always get. Uh, I, I, there's not one answer, uh, but when I'm training, getting back up to speed, like I did a, what was that song, Oh, um, uh, Overkill Elimination, like that was probably the most intense down picking speed I've ever had to try and work up to. And... To get there, I'll just grab my old trusty guitar. Right, so to get there, don't don't you don't tense up. I've made the video on it. You don't tense up. You don't get all tense in the wrist. Just play along with whatever song it is. Don't even worry about hitting the right notes. Don't even try and do all the changes in the riff work. Just keep up with the song. And when you do, I just chug it in here. And when I do, I accentuate the whole movement and I try and make the pick go all the way down to the, like, the, the, all the strings. Like every, every single time, try and keep up with the song all the way through. And um, you're not going to do it. You're going to get tired. You're going to wear out. Once that happens, you just, you just rest for a little bit go back to the start of the song after 10, 20 seconds and just start it again. Yeah. And you just keep on chugging all the way through this. And eventually once you do that, um, whatever it is, you, just that whole motion, I think, it, I think it just gets your wrist moving and stops your whole arm from getting tense, your whole, the whole wrist movement. Um, 
and that that really helped. I found I could, if I do that and warm up each day, like if I'm if I'm about to, I can't just play master of puppets right now. Um, it will be sloppy. I guarantee it. I can't just pick up a guitar, and I could probably keep up with it, but I won't feel right, and I'll be a little bit sloppy in the right hand. But if I, half hour, forty minutes, if I just play play it through a few times and um, do that technique, it uh, I'll have it down again. No worries. And uh, you'll, you'll maintain your speed. I think it relaxes your whole arm, relaxes your wrist. And uh, that is the key to speed up, speeding up your picking, without a doubt. Some people say that you practice upstroking on everything. Um, I've not had much luck with that. Uh, not that I've really tried it, but uh, downstroke all the way through the strings. Let them go. Don't even worry about the changes that much all the riffs and then um, awesome so on that note it was uh, good to chat with you all and uh, take care you're a good boy mate